You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is Job Opportunity by Mariah Evix. Ms. Hernandez? A deep, formal voice. A man in a suit pulls out a chair and sits across from me. I try to catch a glimpse without actually looking up. He looks like a cop. I keep my eyes on my physics book and don't take my earbuds out. I'm here to talk to you about a job opportunity. It's a trick. I won't look up. I pretend he's got the wrong girl. He slides a stack of papers in front of me. Citizenship papers. My abuela's photo on top. It's definitely a trick. I'm with a department of the government that doesn't have a name. But I can make this happen. He spreads out the papers. My whole family. We are looking for a liaison. You appear to have a natural aptitude that is very rare. He puts a photo on top of the pile. Crystal clear, no blur, no distance, no fuzzy ducking out from behind something. A bluish-gray skin with large, bug-like black eyes. Thin slit of a mouth. Tiny nose. Perfectly smooth, giant head. I recognize this alien. I look at the man, and I immediately know I've made a mistake. He grins at me with shiny white teeth and a gleaming bald head. I sigh. A liaison? You need someone who can speak Spanish? He frowns. Not what he's expecting. I smile. At least I'm not entirely predictable. We will offer your entire family citizenship and assist your grandmother in getting the medical attention she needs. Of course there's a catch. I know there's a catch. But getting Abuela the help she needs? I can't say no. I don't even need to know the catch. Okay, when do you need me to start? I've got finals next week. I hold up my book and wait. Now. The world stops. As the world starts again, I'm on a smooth metal bench. I shift around, sitting up. The room is warm and dark with a spotlight in the center. I can't see any doors. The room has smooth, cool, gray metal walls. I run my hand along it, searching for seams. No seams on the wall. None where it meets the floor or ceiling. Not even where the bench had been, but isn't anymore. I finally walk to the spotlight. The metal floor is transparent in the center of the room. I crouch on the floor and look down into the blindingly lit room below. As my eyes adjust, I see a tall, thin, pale blonde woman. She's wearing a strange gray jumpsuit and moving with purpose around the room. She strides to the wall and draws an elaborate design on the gray metal wall. Just on the wall. Not on a panel or buttons. I hear her steps as she walks back across the room. I didn't hear her when she walked over to the wall. I look down at the metal under my hands. It seems to be warm where I'm touching it. But that's simple heat transfer, right? My warm hands warm up the metal which feels warm, right? Someone, something, is strapped to a table in the middle of the room. The woman glances up at me. I pull back from the transparent portal, but I hear her voice in the room clearly. Do not be afraid. This is just an example. Your first day of work. The woman smiles with a look that makes me think of hungry wolves. You must understand who we are dealing with and what they can do to properly communicate with these monsters. 
they are here to interbreed with you since they have lost the ability to sustain themselves they want to control you and your planet you don't want that do you i feel like words are trying to burst forth out of me like she's pulling them out of my mouth when i was little i sat in the hiding spot under the stairs reading way too late and my parents would try to get me to come out by saying things to pull words out of me, usually insulting my favorite books. I learned to keep quiet. I remembered the hiding spot and hold my words in. You, your planet, not hers, not ours, mine. She doesn't seem to notice that I haven't responded. Millions of missing people. You want to help stop that, don't you? So transparent. I lean back in to watch her. The alien with the bulging bug eyes and smooth gray head is strapped to the table. The pale woman moves and slides a tube into its shoulder. I watch as she slides several more in. An electric blue liquid moves through the tubes and into the body of the alien. He's sunken, shriveled. He looks undernourished and sort of dried out. The last time I saw him, he seemed plump, like his skin fit his body. And though his lips had never moved, his giant eyes had gleamed. I'd fallen asleep under the stairs again, and he walked through the wall. He was small enough to stand in the space, by the time I was eight, I had to crouch in there. He told me, though he never said a word, that I would be needed, that I was special. Mom, Papa, and Abuela fought in Spanish faster than I could follow when I told them. I never talked about it again. Not even the next times he came to see me. I looked down at the alien and the woman who was drawing on the wall again. I have to move to watch her hand so I can memorize the shape. The woman is talking again and the floor sinks, becoming more of a bowl, dipping down toward the transparent center. I scramble up toward the sides of the shifting room and start to draw on the walls. A voice fills my head. You have come to rescue me. This was Job Opportunity by Mariah Avix. Mariah Avix is the creator of 600 Second Saga, a space for developing authors to explore the realms of science fiction and fantasy in 10 minutes or less every week. Mariah writes magical tales of how technology will change our world and technologically laced tales of magic that probably isn't real. She is currently working on a series of novellas about shapeshifters who fight wildfires a trilogy about a woman who refuses to admit she has the M-word, and endless flash fiction. When she's not writing, she walks along the rivers and parks throughout her city looking for inspiration. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.